Hey everybody, back with you in this video to continue talking about components, enhanced properties, specifically the action properties. So my name is David Warner. I'm a Microsoft MVP, Microsoft Certified Trainer. Work for Quisitive, huge fan of the community, huge fan of every single one of you and all that you're doing in the community. So thank you, you inspire me each and every day. Please don't be shy, reach out, let me know if you have any questions or would love to collaborate. All right, so what's our agenda for today? Well, we're gonna keep talking about component libraries. So we're gonna talk about component library reviews. What are components? What are component libraries? I'll review that again for those that maybe didn't see the prior videos or uh, are unfamiliar with them. Then we're gonna get into the action properties overview and details, what it is, what it is not, what you can do with it. And then we'll see a demo specifically of those action properties and the ways you can take advantage of them, how they're different from function properties. And then we'll see a preview of what's next and we'll start talking about event properties. So what is a component component library? It is a way to create reusable assets and functionality within an app that could be used on multiple screens. So you're not having to recreate the wheel each and every single time. Uh, for example, if you had a header that is consistent across apps, you could obviously add those controls to each and every single screen, uh, but you might be better off creating a component within the app. That way you change that component once and all the screens get updated automatically. Now the problem with that component living only within the app is that it only lives within the app. If you wanted to use it in other apps, you couldn't, but a component library allows you to do that. So with Within your component library, you build the components, then you inherit that component and component library into your app or multiple apps. And then anytime you make a change to that component inside the component library, any apps that are importing that library and the components will get updated or offered the update. And so you ease your maintenance, you maintain consistency, it makes it scalable. Very, very cool. If you're not familiar with them, definitely start looking into them. All right, so let's talk about Action properties. Action! Action properties are super cool because they're very much like the function properties, uh, specifically the output function property. But the big difference is that while you can define what the logic is inside the component with an action property, uh, it now, the action property as opposed to the function property gives you access to behavioral things. So you can reset, you can clear, uh, you can uh, invoke a select state, right? And that's what we'll see. It's very, very cool. It's very similar to the output function, although it gives you more functionality. You can do more, you can invoke save, etc. cetera. So uh, you can get access to variables and other things. All right, so let's get a little bit more specific about what it can and cannot do. So what can it do? Uh, essentially, it allows you to execute functionality within your component without having to directly interact with whatever is creating that functionality. So for example, let's say we've got a component with a button and that button does something. Well, typically if you want to invoke whatever that button does, you gotta click on the button within the app when your component is displayed. Now though, you could set up an action property that uh, indirectly selects that button. And then you can call that action property from your app somewhere else. So you're able to trigger side effects within a component without actually interacting with the component from the UI perspective for example, clicking on that button. So now that allows you to enhance interactivity with the component features indirectly. So if there's a button click that does something, you could give the users the ability to invoke that button click somewhere else in your app without having to go click on the actual button. What can it not do? Well, you can't change the logic that's inside the action property. So that means that the app cannot define the logic. You'll wanna use an event property for that. And that's what we've got available in another video. So go look for that. But if you want to change the actual functionality that lives within that property, the action property is not the one to do that with. Uh, you'd actually use an event and then the event allows the app to identify what that is. So let's set up our demo. What's the use case? Well, I want to actually uh, invoke social share buttons outside the component. So in the last video, if you've seen it, uh, it, great, you understand what I'm describing. If not, what we have is we've got an app or a component that has buttons to share our badges. So we've got those badges within the community and I wanna be able to display a badge and then I wanna be able to share or provide the user the ability to share that they received the badge. And I've got a X Twitter button, a LinkedIn button and a uh, blue sky button. Uh, so what would typically have to happen is the user would have to click on those buttons inside the component displayed in an app to invoke the functionality behind those buttons. But now with an action property, I can actually tie the action property to the clicking of those buttons. And then in my app, somewhere else, not by clicking on the buttons in the component, I can invoke the same functionality. 
So it, it demonstrates the ability to use action properties to improve user experience, give users access to functionality where uh, you're not having to force them to go one place to do it. So let's jump over and see what that looks like. Okay, so here we are in Power App Studio. Just let me set the context for us again. Uh, we've got our component. I've created an action component here. We've got three buttons, uh, one to share to X, Blue Sky, and LinkedIn. Uh, and we've got our badge image, right? Uh, so the new SharePoint Hackathon. And so if you're still in early 2025, go check out that SharePoint Hackathon that's coming up. It's really exciting, very cool stuff. Uh, I'll include the URL to it in the show notes. Uh, we're really excited about that. And you can earn this badge. But what I've got is if I earned this badge and I want to share it out, then I've got three buttons here. And the buttons are pretty simple. Again, they're just calling the notify function to show what that uh, click to share URL would be. So my share screen gets pre-populated with the Credly uh, URL to this badge. And it does that for each LinkedIn, Blue Sky, and uh, X, right? So each of them have their, their own URLs that are associated to that. Now, over on the screen uh, that I'm using, I've got that uh, component loaded on the screen, right? My action props component here loaded on the screen. Uh, and if I throw that into preview, then I can click on each one of these, right? And I see that show up. I click on X, I see X showing up here. That's exactly what I want. I click on LinkedIn, I see that. And again, you wouldn't normally use Notify, you would do something with the URL, uh, you would perform some function within the component in all likelihood to bring up another app if you're on a mobile device or bring up a browser or something like that. But for purposes of the, uh, of the demo, we kind of understand what's going on. Now, I'd like to maybe invoke that functionality somewhere else in my app. And we saw that with an output function, just the functions property and using it as an output, I can pre-program it into a function, right? But uh, that was not exactly the best way because it was literally only self-aware. I couldn't use uh, I couldn't use behavioral functions or activities. I couldn't use uh, global uh, variables or anything like that. Uh, well, that's where the action property changes things. So I've got my app button here. And ideally, what I'd like to do is I'd like to invoke this in or any one of these buttons when I click this button. I don't want to have to create another separate property for each one of these or anything like that. Or, hey, perhaps I might have a mega menu, right? I've got some navigation that comes out and I've got little social icons here and I want to click those. And when I click those, I want it to invoke each of these, right? So can that be done? Well, yes, that's exactly what we can do with an action property. So I'm going to come back over to my component, right? I'm going to click on components. I'm gonna come back to my action property component and I'm gonna start by creating a new custom property. So my data type is gonna be action and I'm not gonna worry about the return type for right now. Uh, that's a little bit more advanced. We can talk about that later because action and event properties can have a return type. You can return data, which makes them even more valuable. So I'll create a separate video. We're just talking about the basics for now. So I'm gonna create a action property and I'm gonna call it uh, share to X, right? Uh, and I'm gonna click create. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into this property. Uh, so when I click on it here on the properties panel, of course it takes me up into the formula editor for that function. So I see there and I'm, I'm inside of that property and I can now edit what it does. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say select button share to X. Right. So essentially what I'm doing is what I'm saying is when this property, this action property gets executed from within my app, I want you to just simply simulate the X button being clicked. Right. Uh, or not simulate, but actually perform the selection of that X button. OK, so now what I can do is I can come back over to my uh, screen. I can come over to my app button. And now on the on select. I can take my action props component dot and I can take the share to X, right? And when I uh, execute that share to X, close it out with my function. And now when I put this into preview mode, I can click app button and it's essentially calling that 
X button. So it's as if I clicked that, but I didn't, I didn't have to click it. So I clicked that. Now, granted they're right next to one another, but in a perfect world or in a real app situation, I may have this invocation somewhere else. Like I said, up in a navigation up here or here or here, or in a footer or something like that, right? The point is that I can execute. In fact, I could even just turn off the display of this particular component, not even displayed. I can throw it into preview. There we go. Still able to invoke that functionality without even seeing it. So really allows me to control uh, the flow and when and where that gets executed, uh, which, which is really, really cool. Now, of course, you may be thinking, uh, like you've seen me do in the other videos, right? That app button is now tied to just the X button in the component. Uh, can't we make it more dynamic? Is there a way to make it more robust? You got it, I'm so excited. Yes, because that's where parameters come in, right? So I'm gonna come back to components, I'm gonna go into action, and I'm gonna create a new custom property. And this time it's going uh, to be a little more generic and named, or so I'm gonna say act uh, share to social, right? Action share to social. Uh, for the property type, we're going to select action, leave the return type at none. Uh, and then I'm going to create another parameter now. So this is going to make it a little bit more dynamic because instead of defining or hard coding exactly which of these buttons the, uh, the property is connected to, we're going to um, allow and make it dynamic, which again, also, by the way, the benefit of this over a function is that we're not duplicating functionality. We're, we're defining the functionality in these buttons in one place, and then we're just piggybacking them by executing them. Whereas in the original function, we were duplicating, right? So that's another benefit. So I'm gonna do social network, right? Here as the uh, data and, or the name, and the data type is gonna be text and required is true. Leave all that fine. That's good to go. I'm gonna hit create. Um, and then now what I wanna do is instead of tying it to a single one of these buttons, I'm gonna make it a little bit more dynamic. So I'm gonna to come to my new button or my new uh, property function, action function, and I'm gonna expand this and I'm gonna just type in some, uh, some if statement. Now again, we could get more dynamic, more complex, more elegant. I'm just using a simple if. It's just saying if social network, now again, social network is the parameter. Uh, it is available to me. Uh, from right here, right, I could set the default if I wanted to, and it's only available to me within this particular, when I'm editing this particular uh, property. So social network, that is going to be provided by the actual uh, app, okay? So I'm essentially sending the value of social network into this, and then this, this function or this uh, property is saying, well, if the value of social network is X, then click the button share to X. If it's LinkedIn, click share to and LinkedIn and so on and so forth for blue sky. Okay. So, so how does that work then in the app? Well, it's not much different than what we were already doing, but we just get a little more robust. So I come back to my app button and instead of saying, uh, saying share to X, I'm just going to come in. We see now I've got the, the new property available to me. So I'm gonna say share to social. And when I open the paran, we see, okay, great. It's looking for a social network identification. Uh, so I'm gonna say X. And so now again, this value is getting passed into the property and the functionality associated to it. And it's saying, if that value is X, then click the X button when app button is clicked, All right? So how do I know? Well, let me do that, test it. Okay, yep, that is tracking as expected. So now I could come in here and if I change this to LinkedIn and I throw it back into preview and I click the app button, now it is invoking the LinkedIn button. So again, the benefit is that I can emulate the uh, clicking of each of these buttons outside of the component, somewhere else in my app. Uh, and again, I don't even have to have that displayed to be able to do that. Uh, so super, super powerful. And then of course the other benefit here that is a behavior property that obviously that we're adjusting when I come back into the component, if I wanted to, um, I could access and utilize, uh, I could access and utilize, you know, variables, var name, this is a variable. Uh, and it's not airing out like it was with the function. So I'm able to utilize and, and do that, right? So again, another benefit of the action versus just the output function. Super cool stuff.
All right, let's take a look at our key takeaways. Action properties execute behaviors when triggered from the app. So again, the action property has to exist. You have to create the ability for the app to uh, connect to and invoke any of that functionality, but it gives you the opportunity to not have to actually click or interact with somewhere specific in the component. So it inter enhances that interactivity um, and allows the components to respond dynamically to other user events. All right, so what's next? Let's talk about event properties. It's essentially the reverse, right? So it's the input pro function property, but it now, like actions, allows behaviors and stuff like that. All right, see you in that video. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.